Greetings, citizen, and welcome to Cthulhu State TV. You're reminded that watching is compulsory, and anyone found in a state of non-compliance will be sent to the Shadow Valley's facility for re-education. That is right, this embodied announcer voice. This is NKS TV News. I am your host, Dynamic Kerman, with today's top headlines. World leaders display lack of foresight at Congress, with the slight against the leader, with Johnny. Aganark Industries reported to be conducting secret tests. All technologies seems to research in preparation against Northern Clathew. Great Emperor of Velox Empire suddenly dies, leaving all possessions and land to the leader, with Johnny. More details on these stories later in the program, but first... Hey guys and welcome back to Kerbal Collaborative Warfare and in particular my base of Shallow Valley, yes the Shallow Valley re-education facilities. We are launching two new war heroes with this one single vessel here. We are of course using the Birch Swan template here, this is though the Pine Duck which has been reconfigured for a very very special mission and that is what we're going to get to first. Now my first consideration here is of course trying to get this thing off of this helipad. This is not a, a runway, we're not really supposed to be taking planes off here let alone planes as big and unwieldy as this but there is a nice ramp and as long as I don't go down too fast I should imagine everything is going to be alright. Those back engines on the back there if I do go over stuff that's a little bit too uh, rough, too fast, they do have a habit of exploding. So I've learned to be very, very careful whilst going down here. But the land in front of me looks good enough for a takeoff. So if we let, let our engines build up some thrust with our, with our engines on and then just rip it. I happen to know that there is a small rise just a little bit down here, right here in fact, where we can actually take to the skies and take off. And we're just going to go in a very, very slight parabolic trajectory over towards the Birch Swan there, 42 kilometers away. Doesn't take long, but you know what, I'm going to skip it anyway. So here we are two, three minutes later, Madek Kerman taking the controls here, making a nosedive as it looked like we were going to be uh, screaming far too high, far too far here. So we just put our nose down to try and like get down before we got to the Birch Swan and we are trying to get down as low as possible. We have a special delivery to make here and as you may have noticed from the last episode, sometimes these things take a while to hit the floor. So. A little bit of an explosion there, that kind of worried me, but we were diving down fast enough that I was quite happy to leave that as it was. I was taking a look around my vessel and everything looked okay, so we're going to come over here and it's alright. The only thing I've lost is a couple of RTGs off the back there and it turns out those weren't really needed there. What we have here is a fuel tank with a claw attached to it. That is literally just to try and get some more fuel into the Birch Swan because obviously with Tamti being stranded out here she is absolutely no use to the war effort whatsoever plus she is a little bit vulnerable though we are deep within my own land so everything should be okay here we've done eight, one single pass and in that time the, the uh, delivery probe here has landed so everything seems okay we're going to start climbing up at about a 45 degree angle standard trying to cover the ground type trajectory and then we're going to select brown rock brown rock is my destination here and um, whilst chronologically i did just carry on and fly all the way to brown rock i think it makes a lot more sense if we Come and see what Tamti was doing down here. So those of you with a memory better than mine remember why Tamti's here. I think we'd come back from dropping off Bob. Yes indeed we're coming back from dropping off Bob over at Tapes Bases. And we came back and we were going to make our way to um, Kerman, Kerman Lake. Unfortunately we ran out of fuel where we stand. And this is why this mission had to happen here. Thankfully Tamti has had a lot of, um, lot of experience with the engineering corps, so when she got over to this probe she could just be like, hey I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and fix all these wheels. But somehow she managed to turn it on its back, which just isn't what the plan was at all, absolutely like nothing like this. I, I spent some time trying to turn it over with Tamti but that wasn't going to happen. Uh, I thought maybe we could use the robotics to do some stuff like this, uh, and possibly I did a little bit of damage here, though we're not sure 
and I will show you why I think that in just a moment. But yeah, I'm climbing over with Tamdi here, just trying to see if her weight can add anything to the physics here and make things work. I, I don't think it was going to. I, I, to be honest, I didn't at any point think it was going to. And I didn't put any sort of SAS control on this, or at least any reaction wheels. So we're kind of stuck with what we've got here. Uh, so there is really only one option. We need to go and grab the Birch Swan and bring it back. Because, as I say, that is the only option going to us here. The only thought that I may have is it looks like the ground is sloping the other way. And that, that is very worrying to me. But the only thing we can do is go and try. I'm going to try and lift up the back landing gear first. I think this would possibly give us the best sort of downward slope. Well, this is what I'm hoping for. Uh, it doesn't really look like it's going to do anything that I, I, I want it to. Indeed, even opening and closing the cargo bay there seemed to have done nothing for our sliding forward potential, which was a little bit a little bit vexing. I was kind of hoping that would do something, but we, we put down on all our landing gear. We sorted out the steering so that it would work properly, and we turned our brakes off, and joy of joys, the miracle happened. We started rolling in the right direction, so I, I'm just over the moon here. Uh, my, main my main aim is... Here is to try and put the nose of the birch swan right over the front of that claw. I'm not sure how we're going to attach it or what we're going to do or, or anything like this, but I do know that getting there and being properly lined up is really the only way we're going to get this claw to attach. So I think I'm I'm good there. I'm going to lower down our landing gear, try and not break the vessel at the same time, and then just try a lot of wiggling around, seeing what we can do to try and get this pointed in the right direction. Unfortunately, as I say, we didn't have any reaction wheels whatsoever on that vessel, so we're going to have to try and use the Birch Swan and Tamti to just try and arrange things in, a, in the correct order. Now we could go through for a blow for blow uh, report of how I moved this piston around, how I used the hinge to my advantage, how I used Tamti to push stuff around, but I think what we're actually going to do is cut to this shot right here where we show just how futile it all was anyway, because even with perfect alignment when the claw hits there was no docking happening and this is why I think that little bit where we were flaying around on the floor did some damage because I just I couldn't get it to attach no matter what I did, I seem to have had a lot of good contacts but it just it never worked. And I can tell you, a lot of good engineers are going to be held accountable for this. Oh yes, mark my words. Welcome back to KSTV News. I am your host, Enemy Kerbin, with today's top story. The death of the Emperor of Velox. Here with full details is our dear leader, Twit John E. Citizens, it is with a heavy heart that I tell you our closest ally and greatest neighbor, the Emperor of the Velox Empire, has passed away recently. As the mortal bodily of a heavenly god incarnate, of course I have took it upon myself to be present at his passing. Whereupon the great leader himself turned to me and said, You, you should lead my people to greatness. Take my lands, take everything that is mine. Go forth, be prosperous. So I hereby declare all the lands of Velox Empire are mine. Anyone who disagrees shall face my war cancel. Truly a bittersweet time for us all. Not only are we having to deal with the loss of a player, but also the leader Twitch Johnny has grown in power. All of Velox's lands now belong to him. <coughs> it's legit, honest. So Madet and Strada, or Strada as I like to call her, have been flying over this ocean for quite some time now. It looks to be about 10-15 minutes on the on the mission clock, which, given how slow this game has been running recently, actually equates to about 20-25 minutes. We are within 80 kilometers of Brown Rock, and with our speed being close to a kilometer a second, that is dropping all the time. We are flying towards the peninsula that I like to call East Clothu. Uh, down below us right now we have Bit Sandy, and off to the right we have the tip held by Aganarch and Penguin Empire respectively. We will be dealing with these at some point, but our first priority is to go and take hold of Brown Rock. Now, the one thing that I have been noticing as I get closer and closer is there only appears to be a flag there. Now, this would normally leave me with all sorts of moral questions in my head. Should I, like, leave this one and go take another base? Because if there's no defensive structure there, how can I truly say that I took it over? 
But as this was originally part of the Velox Empire and now all his lands belong to Twitch Yongi, I'm not really feeling that. So I think what we're going to do is just go down as low as we can and see if we can spot a landing zone anywhere. I've got to say, from up here, the land looks very rough indeed. So I'm not sure how we're going to do that. The other thing that I have noticed is that I am actually overshooting like a bad boy. Uh, for some reason, I didn't put any brakes or start nosing down until we were within, within sort of 30, 40 kilometers. And that's nowhere near enough time to slow down if you're traveling nearly a kilometer a second. So I try and do the same thing that we did when we were approaching the Birch Swan. I put myself into a nosedive. I slammed my brakes on wasn't quite enough to do what I wanted to do so we're gonna just carry on nose diving I am a little bit worried that because I am over the top of a mountain if I just go straight down through these clouds I'm not gonna see the top of the mountain in time before I get to pull up so we're gonna come down a slightly less steep slope than I was originally intending when I put myself into this nose dive Whilst making my descent here, I have been trying to keep an eye out for a halfway decent LZ. Uh, trying to look for the telltale constant patch of shadow or constant patch of light that kind of indicates that something is all just a, a nice, flat, featureless plane. Unfortunately, all I've really seen are jagged bits and bumps and little lumps on the floor. I mean, just looking down at that plateau below us, it looks kind of straight, but then if you look carefully you can see there's all sorts of roughage to it and stuff like that, and, and that's not conducive to being able to land down get a put the Kerbal disembarking and like come over there with a flag. So I think it's time for Strada to start showing her uh, special abilities here. Now the reason it's taken her so long to get deployed into this war is because she has been off with special forces. She's been taking lessons. She has been playing with the big boys. So what she's done here is just went and totally ejected herself here, which I think is one of the bravest things I've ever seen a Kerbal do shy of Bob Kerman doing the exact same thing a little while ago but once again I'm getting so much better at these precision uh, placements we, we put her down we deployed her parachute mere meters off the floor and as long as we haven't managed to break her neck I think we're gonna go take on one of Aganarch's bases now we're gonna take all the weaponry that we could have launched at this and oh look bit sandy is just over there and I've been threatening about this for a long time Welcome back to KSTV News. Disturbing reports have been coming in from across the world in relation to the increase in weapon research and development from Agon Arch Industries. One very worrying account implies that it is all for an upcoming invasion of Northern Clathu territory. In this shocking footage you can see the rogue nation has already run simulations of destroying our largest military complex and is well known for its advanced weaponry. A source on the inside has provided KSTV News with this exclusive footage of the increasing military presence at Bit Sandy. They also tell us he only took Bit Sandy to threaten Northern Clathu. All in all, this reporter says. We're in trouble. And that is exactly why we're going to attack these villainous forces being like built up on my very coastland. If we were to cross the water in front of us, we would in no time at all find us in the heartland of my own country. The Kerbal Space Center, the Space Center Island, Jeb's Island, Mount Snowy, all these are over there and I will not let these forces be built up on my borders. That and the fact that he fired cruise missiles at my people? Well, honour just demands that I at least attempt to have a go at him. So we are coming in now, 16 kilometres. I'm thinking 8 might be a little too high for us to be at, so we're going to start nosing down in a bit. The first thing I need to make sure is that everything is working fine. I'm looking around, making sure I'm on the right team. Don't really want to go into this like with any extra advantage or anything other than you know my innate abilities to just be so good at this game. My tactics going into this encounter are pretty much the same as they've always been. I'm going to start off just pointing straight at the uh, the target I'm going for. And then as I get closer, I'm going to start weaving left and right. Which By which I mean I'm just going to pull up whilst turning my vessel or rotating my vessel uh, around its axis. Just, just as you can see, I'm starting to do here now. We're going to wait until we're about five kilometers away. And then we're going to start firing missiles. I do like to try and fire them as my wings are turning. Just to make sure that the, you know there's plenty of clearance room and stuff like that I, I very rarely hit my own vessel but once in a while it does happen especially when I make a turn in the wrong direction at the wrong time okay so we are four and a half kilometers it's time to send stuff away uh, we are under attack 
first missile is away, two missiles are away. So it's time to try and set off the third one. I'm having some real trouble just like getting my controls here. And for some reason, just clicking and holding the fire button isn't working. Uh, they're coming in fast, they're coming in hot. I am really worried here. And everything just blew up. Uh, so we're just going to see what happens here. Everything's coming in hot. We have an explosion. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. We're going to skip around and see if we can find out exactly what's going on. Wow, that is loud. Explosions everywhere. Explosions. At what's going on? Oh, I'll take that. That's great. All right, cool. So obviously when I exploded one, the other exploded. I know, I know I definitely took out one here. And I'm going to say that maybe my debris or maybe the debris of everything else came along and took the other one out. I'm not I'm not sure what happened, but I think we're just going to take it as a win. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that, that'll do. So let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Agonarch. I will take out my own war heroes to prove a point and get back at a missile launched at me. Nah. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at all the debris. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of cleanup to do here. And with that, the only thing left to do is deploy the naked beast at Brown Rock and say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time where we're going to carry on taking over the entire world.